Hi, I'm Alex Howard. I'm here with Tanya Page, one of the nutrition team at the clinic. And today we're going to be talking about mitochondrial function and their role in ME, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, Lyme disease, and really that group of illnesses. And I think this is one of the most fascinating areas of what, as a clinic, we've been really quite trailblazing in in the last three, four years or so. Because what it explains is, well, one of the things it explains is the delayed fatigue response that a lot of patients can experience. And I know that when I look back on my own experience of, of being ill, that was so difficult to understand how I could be fine for a few days, maybe I would do it a little bit, but I'd have no reaction. And then a couple of days later, it was like someone pulled the plug of energy and I just felt completely awful. And of course, this really explains that process. So maybe Tanya, a good starting point is what the mitochondria actually are. Okay, well they're basically the, um, uh, the little energy producing parts of, of every cell. So pretty much every cell has mitochondria um, and their, their whole, um, well, they do a few other things apart from it, but you know, the main function is to produce energy and without that, uh, you can't do any enzymic metabolic reactions in the body. Nothing works, basically. Everything in the body is driven by ATP. Okay, okay. And that being the case of kind of what they are, how is it relevant with, with ME and so how people actually get symptoms as a result of this process not working? Okay, well, the easiest way to describe that is to use a visual aid. Normally, I draw a diagram for, for a patient, but in this case, we're going to use balls. Sorry. <laughs> I, like, I, I should comment that when Tanya made a request in the office for ping pong balls and a tennis ball, um, I got very excited because the ping pong ball actually came with bats as well. Um, so we now basically have table tennis in our office on, on one of the desks. Um, but obviously, more importantly today is explaining my control function. Um, Indeed. Indeed, because ATP is, um, when you start talking, you know, technical about ATP, people's eyes glaze over a little bit. So just to use the visual aids to make it easier to understand. So um, we do actually have to talk about the structure of the molecule of ATP to make it make sense. So this is adenine, okay, this is just a nucleotide. Um, this is uh, ribose, it's a sugar, and that together forms um, adenosine, okay. Um, and then we have some phosphate molecules, um, and there's three of those, if I can extract my hair from them, and so that becomes adenosine triphosphate, three molecules. So hopefully you can see that okay, so adenosine here, um, and then triphosphate, okay. That's important because in order to create energy, you need to lose a phosphate molecule from ATP, and it becomes ADP. Uh, adenosine triphosphate. So in order to produce energy, this has to be released, and Alex is going to show. Ow! <laughs> Lily hit the camera person. I'll get another go in a second. Energy being released, okay. So um, what's important is in the body, uh, normally you should have a recycling process, but once you've lost a phosphate molecule from ATP, you need to get it back to recycle it back to ATP. So that comes um, mysteriously, back comes that phosphate molecule. So there you've got um, ATP again. So um, uh, apparently you actually get through your own weight in ATP molecules a day. That's what you're supposed to do. Okay, but obviously some of our patients are not producing that much. So again, you lose phosphate molecule to produce... Sorry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I just, just hit the camera person in the face. Sorry, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get too good a shot. So, um, and mass resignations this afternoon. <laughs> It's okay, because we're left now with ADP, um, adenosine diphosphate. So, um, obviously what we've just been demonstrating is what should happen. What can happen um, is if you haven't got the raw materials, if you haven't got some of the, the, the background stuff or the, uh, the metabolic um, ability to, to keep producing ATP, um, on a regular basis from the chemical energy from your food, um, you'll be left a bit more often with, with ADP. And if you can't actually recycle that third uh, phosphate molecule, you're going to have to start breaking this down. So you'd again lose... I would dust this time. Hey, yes. you the camera. Molecule. <laughs> so then we're left with AMP and it is in monophosphate. Now, unfortunately, this can't be made back into ATP. So we can't get any energy from this. So the only option we've got is to go back to first principles and make the whole thing from raw materials again, which can take several days. So 
um, what Alex was talking about earlier, in that you overexert yourself, perhaps do a little bit extra physical or mental um, uh, work, you you can get yourself into a situation where you're just um, your resources are just being lost uh, gradually until you're finally left with no ability to make ATP. At that point, you hit the wall mm -hmm. because you can't produce any more energy. So and that's when you, you feel like you're crashing because you, you exactly. you've lost the, you lost your energy. Exactly. And interestingly, it's exactly the same experience that marathon runners get when they hit the wall. Mm. It's absolutely the same. They've run out of ATP. So, um, and of course, they have adrenal reserves and that kind of thing that they, they can then use in that situation. Yeah, absolutely. But in a, in a chronic fatigue patient, they're going to have to rest for three days maybe um, until the raw materials come back in. And of course, they start coming back. Yep, absolutely. And that's <laughs> Very good. And you've got your ATP again. So as long as that recycling happens, everything's fine. Um, uh, if, if it starts to go wrong, that kind of explains uh, why you get that <clears throat> feeling. It's, it's you losing your balls. <laughs> so that, that being the process of what happens in the body, Yes. how do we test for that? We test uh, using a blood test, uh, which looks at um, how much uh, ATP you're actually producing. Uh, which is really important. Have you got the raw materials to make um, ATP in the mitochondria? Secondly, are you able to do that recycling process? And there's several things we look at to find out whether you're recycling effectively. Um, one of the things that, that can be, it's not that common, but, but sometimes the actual energy cycle being where energy is passed out of the mitochondria to the rest of the cell, that can actually become blocked. Um, and that can be through heavy metals, pesticides, um, various um, imbalances within the cell. And these things, of course, come up in the blood test that we, we can yeah, see. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we look at all that, so we know exactly what's going on, whether it's, whether it's raw materials, uh, which we can give you via supplementation, or whether it's blockages that we have to sort out through treating heavy metals yeah. or, or pesticides or other chemicals. So and then in terms of what we find out what's going on, what, what can we do about it, which I guess is the, the final piece? Yeah, well, once we know what the situation is, you either then have to um, supplement with the raw materials um, or, or start detoxing if it's, if it's something uh, blocking the energy cycle. But essentially, it's fairly straightforward to put the bits in that you're missing and slowly build up the ability to actually create that, that healthy recycling um, again. So it's almost like your supporting system in the short term, yeah. so it can then do that for itself in the long term. Absolutely. Once it's going, yeah. It can stay going. It, it's just once you put that spanner in the works and the whole thing falls down, then then you're fine. So pacing is really important. So the yeah. psychology team are really important in, in helping our patients to um, actually uh, stay within the limits, uh, bounce the boundaries just yeah. gently. Yeah. Because um, once you once you lose your balls, basically, um, you've got to start again. Yeah. And then it's a lot of energy to, to, to build it all up again. So what we like to do is give you the the, all the nutrients you need to, to be able to recycle and keep yourself there. Yeah, and of course we're kind of running out of time for, for, for this video, but it's also very much linked on the psychology side to those energy depleting psychologies like the achiever type and the helper type, where someone's always pushing beyond what they're able to do, Indeed. and then as a result they keep, they keep putting stress on their mitochondria. Yeah. So it's on the psychology side, it's working through those, those patterns, and then getting them on the biomedical side, getting the nutrients in, if it's appropriate, and support the system in, in, in replenishing itself. So this is a very complex area, and this is something that, you know, it's not appropriate for someone at home just to kind of, I know people, I, we've come across patients that just started buying the mitochondria supplements, yeah. but it really does need the depth of testing first to find out what's going on. Indeed, and then putting the, the appropriate nutrients in at the right time. Based on that case and what's yeah. happening, yeah. 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 Okay, great. Well, thank you for watching. Thank you, Tony. Hopefully that's been helpful for people. Um, and if you want to investigate more, um, obviously 15-minute chats are a great way of doing that. Um, and I'm going to have a final shot of the camera. So Charlie might want to duck behind. Ah, another one. I'm going to give up in a second. <laughs> They're now coming back this way. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you again soon.